Welcome back! Today I'll be showing you how I make my spaghetti bolognese. Let's do this. Jumping straight into it, we'll need about one pound of beef, some bacon, celery, onions, and carrots. My goal in these videos is to encourage others to cook. Cooking at home does not have to be difficult, but there are often mentalities that makes it more challenging. First hurdle is prep. Onions can be quite tricky to cut. I like to cut both ends of the onion so that it's not wobbling around then slice it straight down the middle. Peel off the outer layers until you can not see any more skin. As always, practice makes perfect. Once again here, cut off the top and the bottom, slice it straight down the middle, and peel away the outer layers. As for carrots, I like to cut off the top and bottom first. Then, with a vegetable peeler, I start peeling from the center, away from myself. That way, I can make sure that I don't cut myself as I'm peeling the carrots. Flip it around and continue peeling away. And there you have it, one peeled carrot. Again, peeling from the center, away from yourself. Flip. And done. I'm using a food processor here, but everything can be minced by knife. Once everything is in the food processor, use the pole setting to start mincing the vegetables. We do not want chunks of vegetables in our sauce, but we also want more texture than a puree. As you're using the food processor, grab a spatula to scrape down the sides and continue pulsing until your vegetables are nicely minced. Once again, scrape down the sides. And just pulse one last time. And this should be your end result. In the cooking terms, this is your mirepoix. As for the meat, here comes everyone's favorite, bacon. Just give these a rough chop don't need to be precise. And I always have two cutting boards at home, one for vegetables and one for raw meat. Just make sure that you do not cross contaminate and get sick. As for the ground beef, split it into half and mix some meatballs. Straight into a smoking hot pan they go. And what we're looking for here is some good browning on all sides. That's all. We'll cook the rest of the beef later Right now, all we're doing is just building some crust here so that it will enhance the flavors in the final product. Once all sides are brown, it's time to crisp up the bacon. Adding the veggie mix onto crispy bacon and spreading it around so everyone gets some direct heat. Once the vegetables are nicely softened, add back and break up the beef and mix in a can of tomato paste. People often mistake bolognese to be a tomato sauce, but really it's a meat sauce. 
This is the one and only tomato component in the sauce. Once the tomato paste is no longer bright red, add in one cup of white wine and set the temperature to medium low and will simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes until the alcohol is cooked off. After 10 to 15 minutes, the sauce should look something like this. Once the smell of alcohol is faint, it's time to add in one cup of chicken broth and one cup of milk. Make sure to add the milk in slowly, as it could curdle if you add it in all at once, meaning you'll end up with milk chunks in your sauce, and no one likes that. Give everything a good mix, then add in a pinch of nutmeg and two bay leaves. Let this simmer for another 30 to 40 minutes. Second hurdle that I've encountered while cooking is cleaning up. No one likes to clean up after a hearty meal, so I like to do my dishes as I'm waiting for the sauce to reduce. If every home-cooked meal ends with a pile of dishes, it's natural that anyone will avoid cooking at home. But once I've started cleaning as I go, this delicious habit is no longer a chore. At around 15 minutes mark, I start boiling a pot of water for my spaghetti. Cook them until it's softened but not fully cooked. You want to finish cooking the spaghetti in this sauce. I would advise taking out the bay leaves before adding in the spaghetti, so learn from my mistake. Give everything a big toss until the spaghetti is coated with the sauce and let the pasta finish cooking while soaking in the flavors. Off to plating. I usually cook more than one meal so I can pack the leftovers for lunches. Make sure each bowl gets plenty of sauce and meat and sprinkle on top lots of parmesan or a little depending on your palate and that's how I make my spaghetti bolognese.